buying media is a commodity. Anyone can buy media. We want to approach it in a different lens that shows the brands we do work with or potentially future brands that we always want to come back to the standpoint of who are we working towards reaching? What is that audience? What are their habits? Then let's figure out how we go to market. We want to get away from, we have a product to sell, help us go out to market, go buy media. It's making sure brands understand that we look at this from a different perspective. We don't look at it from the lens of media buying. It truly is data first. Hi everyone, and welcome to Inner Wealth, the Forbes Ignite podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Kakal, CEO of Forbes Ignite. And every week I'll be sharing with you my conversations with unique, creative, and innovative people across all different industries. These are people who are intellectually curious explorers who are also redefining what it means to be successful today. From personal to professional, we cover it all to understand what drives our guests to blaze their own trails and create nimble solutions within the industries that touch each of our lives. Hi, Craig. How's it going? Thanks so much for joining me. It is going great. Thank you for having me. Very excited to be with you today. Yeah, it's been a while since we last chatted, but I'm really excited to catch up with you and see how you're doing. And basically, what have you been up to lately? Um, It's been quite busy, as you know, in the industry, the advertising space has been a little hectic, I think, as we've come out of COVID and back to normal. Uh, A lot of brands are kind of looking out there and seeing what's what's available, what they're not doing, what they should be considering. So to be quite honest, the first four months of the year so far has been quite busy. So all good. We'd like to take a breath every now and again, but I'm, I'm not going to complain. Yeah, but busy is good for the, for the most part. But yeah, what are some of the projects that you've been working on? Right now, we are looking to support a, a whole portfolio of different client brands, either establishing themselves from a brand perspective, getting away from the, you know, the B2B model is, is getting leads and Uh, getting individuals in their pipeline. Um, Some are now looking at how they do brand, how they position themselves more holistically to individuals and audiences. A lot of work right now on audience insights with regards to thinking of how you engage a B2B decision maker from more of a consumer angle. You know, the lines are definitely blurred between when they have their B2B hat on and when they have their consumer hat on to navigate that and really understand the nuance between an individual could be on a consumer website, but still thinking about their business. So how do we approach that from a marketing media angle and uh, ensure we're being effective and efficient with their media dollars uh, that we're spending for them? Yeah. Tell me more about that. The lines that are being blurred between B2B and the consumer side. Yeah. So obviously is, is the demographic that's making business purchasing decisions is getting younger. Those individuals, you know, we talked about like native, you know, digital adopters and so forth. These are digital natives. They've been digital their whole lives. Now they're in situations where they are leading a small business. They're a part of a buying committee for enterprise. They're working with established mid-market that are growing. So the challenge for us is they're not just looking at their day-to-day responsibility in the lens of nine to five. They're working ahead of that. They're working beyond that. And they could also be juggling their own consumer activities, their own needs for sports information, travel, finance, like whatever they're trying to do in their personal lives, it could be intersecting with that time that they're also spending thinking about their business, thinking about how they acquire, thinking about who they bring in as a resource or a solution to help them grow. So for us, it really is about using data at the very beginning of an engagement to ensure that we are in some way, shape or form putting our ourselves forward as data agnostic. We want to come at this discussion for those brand partners thinking in the lines of what data do you have? What data do we have? How do we put the message in front of them more effectively and efficiently rather than just buying media? Absolutely. And that is really fascinating. And I'd love to know what attracted you to the work that you're doing today? Basically, what is your personal journey? It's definitely not when I thought I would be here (laughs) at this point in my career. I studied advertising in college. I was lucky enough to have an internship with an agency in Chicago for three of those four years. And so I was always really a part of agency business, agency activities, even as a student, understanding what agencies were doing. Um, This was well before holding companies were a thing. This is well before digital media. So having that opportunity to to really immerse myself in the day-to-day as a student led me to to stand back a little bit and say, okay, do I want to be creative? Do I want to be account? Do I want to be operations? Where do I want to focus? So coming out of school, 
I made a very big, big change. And I actually opened up a coffee shop, a little different. So I, I took my experience and I said, you know what? I'm not really wanting to do this right now. I, I found some folks in the Chicago area who were looking to open up a coffee shop. This is a couple of years before Starbucks really took off. And so I, I said, you know, this is interesting. I can learn a lot. I, I, you know, I threw some money into the pot and said, okay, let's figure out what this looks like. I did that for about two to three years. We did a pretty good job expanding the business to a couple locations. And at the end, they wanted to go a different route than I did. So I said, this is my chance to go step back into what I focused on as a student and what I want to focus on for a career. And I got back into the advertising business. And so from that point on, I took all the experience of running a business and being client centric and, you know, having to have a smile on your face and, and run a business day in and day out, both managing teams and keeping clients happy and put that into the advertising space and really focused on leading account, leading client, but also being a little bit more of a, a jack of all trades than saying, I want to be a media expert, or I want to be an account expert or a creative person. I, I wanted to kind of manage everything, keep it in front of me and help teams do what they do best, but also lead that client engagement. You know, and 25 years later, here I am kind of doing that. So it's been, it's been a fun, it's been a really fun journey. And, you know, looking back, it's gone very quickly, but I'm happy to say that I'm proud of the fact that I will never say I'm an expert in anything, but I can surely lead a client engagement and help them as a business leader, knowing I've run a business myself. That's incredible. I love it. And you usually hear about the opposite, like people will work for a couple of years and then they'll dive in with both feet into entrepreneurship. But this was sort of the other way around. So tell me, how was that transition for you? Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting transition, right? So obviously doing it as a younger individual out of college gave me a lot, gave me a different perspective on it, right? Like I was seeing things from a different lens. I was, I was managing the business and looking at revenue and, and costs and so forth, but I wasn't doing it in the sense of the long term. For me, it was interesting and fun. And I didn't see myself doing it for a decade. And I always thought that I would get back into what I wanted to focus on, which was media and advertising and, and, and client engagement. I mean, at that point, it was just media and advertising. So what I've been able to do in, in that sense is, you know, it doesn't ever mean I won't go back to that at some point, but I always want to have that kind of an entrepreneurial mindset with what I do. And I like to do that with my teams. And that essentially means that you are really well focused on what you're trying to accomplish, but you have the right people working with you to get the job done. I'm a very big fan of solving problems and building effective teams to do that. So a lot of that comes back to ensuring that the teams know what to focus on, the vision for the business, know what the client, the, the clients need to know what you want to focus on for them and what you're going to solve. Um, you know, I tell, and this is people out of college or people I've hired with 30 years of experience is, my mindset is that we're never going to be a vendor for a client. We're going to be a partner. And I think that always comes back to like, you know, running a coffee shop is they're there to buy coffee from you. And if you want to sit there and look at it as a transaction, you can. My thing was I want to build a relationship. I want to get to know people. I want to understand what they need and how we shape the business for them. And I think that re that relates really well to what we're doing now. I, you know, it's, it's fun running a coffee shop because you get to chat with people and, and find out who they are. And, you know, I don't have money. I'll pay you tomorrow. Like, no problem. But you're there as like a, as, as a resource, as a, as a relationship for them. They could now, they can go buy coffee anywhere. With my business, they could go run media anywhere, right? The, the clients that work with us don't work with us because we buy media really well. It's they work with us because we can do a lot of things to help them solve their businesses really well. And that's what I want my team to understand is you're going to evolve beyond media or whatever you're doing now into other roles in your career, start to see what that path looks like. And I didn't have that when I wrote my coffee shop. If I were to do it today, I would certainly have a broader vision on what I want to accomplish rather than looking down at my feet and being like, oh, isn't this fun? I want my teams to come in and feel that sense of ownership, that sense of I'm in charge of this. This is my responsibility, whether it is Something is, is, is rudimentary as billing in operations or, or emails to clients or as larger as global strategy around ABM or ABX or whatever that is. I want them to feel like they have a sense of ownership of that versus great. It's more work, right? Because once you have that mindset that you're just getting work for, you know, requests from a client, you're responding to it, it becomes kind of that vendor mentality of things fly over the fence. You work in it, you throw it back and their client goes forward. 
I want them to always come back and think, okay, what can I do differently? How do I think about it differently? This is my responsibility. Engage with the client, say, you know, have an opinion. Like, I don't think this is the right thing, or we're going to go this route. Here's my recommendation. It's, it really is thinking, they're just thinking about themselves and the mindset of as a partner with that client to help solve problems rather than here's a media brief. I'm going to put a plan together. We're going to go activate it. And then we're going to report on it. Like it becomes very cyclical at that point. And I think that's why some people just get burned out. They don't see a larger opportunity in front of them. No, I totally get it. And I love the analogy of being a former coffee shop owner to an ad executive and there, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to learn about customer experience that let me just say that you were well beyond your years <laughs> when you were running your coffee shop. And so speaking of customer experience, how has that changed during a pandemic and what have you seen versus what's happening now? Yeah, obviously no one, no one could plan for what we just went through for the last couple of years. One of the things I, I penned for, you know, for LinkedIn when it started was it's going to be interesting to see what this does, right? Is this a positive for us as a whole? Is this a negative? It's going to be really, really interesting to see what the, the restraints the pandemic is putting on us, both as businesses or business professionals, as well as individuals, and where it goes. Now, two years later, you can see where that's netted out and a lot of different impacts, positively and negatively. But my, my statement at that time was, you know, I have always been the kind of person to say, let's sit down face to face. Let's work through this. Let's take a couple of days. Let's do it in person because that is where the relationship starts and grows from. And then that could be, you know, I've had clients in Brazil and Singapore and the Europe. It doesn't matter. I'll get in a plane because I realize the value of that relationship is only as good as the effort you put into it. Some, you know, some people in the last couple of years are very hesitant to travel and I understand why. And that's fine. And that's their, that's their focus or, or, or they'll overcome it. But I'm still a very firm believer in if you have a great relationship for a client, any issue or challenge that you go through becomes smaller with that relationship strength. Mm -hmm. So now with people working remotely and on video and, and people, you know, want to be on phone calls and not want to travel, the concern I have is it's very hard to build a, a strong relationship or a strong foundation with a client in that partnership mentality when everything is virtual. Um, so I've, I've, you know, I've been on a couple of trips in the last few months and I continue to do that and want to get in front of clients. And it's amazing to hear the clients who sit there and say, we'd love you guys to come out and sit down with us, right? Not hearing that for a couple of years is kind of exciting to me. It's energizing. And so my belief now is that what I've learned from the pandemic is it, it, it just goes back to reinforcing the importance of the strong relationship and what you need to do as a business professional to get there. Some, you know, some clients have always been remote. We've had clients who've lived on, on boats in the Caribbean, right? We've never sat down with them. If you can still find a way to build a good relationship with them, if it's small talk about movies, about, you know, culture, whatever it is, fantastic. Figure out what that is and build on it. Don't let that go away. And it, it's hard for me now. I mean, I'm learning, I've learned a lot in the last two years how you adapt to that mindset for me, that was always like, I will get on a plane, we'll go sit down, I'll bring a team, we'll work through this together, we'll show that we're one. How will you do that virtually is, is definitely been a challenge. And, you know, I've, I've, I read a lot, I consume a lot of insights and per people's perspectives and businesses' perspectives. And it, I'm still trying to figure out how to do that without the, without the ability to be face to face. And it's challenging. And I, I, I look at them in the land, my own lens. If I'm sitting down with someone on a four hour call, the, <laughs> the ability for me to multitask grows exponentially the longer I'm on that call. <laughs> Same thing for those clients. I'm thinking that's just that's hard because if you're face to face, you're not going to sit there and turn off your camera and do work. You're, you're going to engage and figure out how to do that work later because you're face to face with someone and that goes away when you're in virtual. It is amazing what you can accomplish face to face in just 30 minutes versus let's say a three or four hour long call. Absolutely. So advertising in general gets a bad rap sometimes. Sure. What are some of the ways that advertising helps the world in your opinion? It's a, it's a great question. I think we've focused on that more now in the last two years the agency I'm with now, the, the, you know, the company and the, the parent company and the agency and so forth, 
We focused on that more in the last two years than I've ever seen before. So it's it, what's important, I think, as a leader within the industry is to be able to amplify that message, whether it is getting carbon neutral and being more green as a business, things like less, less business travel, reducing real estate and footprints and taking trains and not cars and, and being able to measure that in some way. You know, I'm, I'm with the Dentsu family. They do a great job of, of getting that effort out into the media to say, listen, we are as an organization very concerned about this and how we contribute to the betterment of society and reducing that carbon footprint. So that is one angle that you typically would never see from an ad agency or you don't think about it. You'd see it from an airline or from a hotel or logistics or some one of those type of, of companies. And then the second thing is how as a business that is investing millions of dollars of brands money in the market, how we begin to look at this more through the lens of equitable investing mm -hmm. rather than oh, you know what? We think you're going to love, I don't know, Reddit. We're going to put a lot of money into Reddit. And that's just one of the, the emerging brands or emerging publishers we're seeing on the social side as an example. And we have done a good job through our leadership of coming back and saying, we're going to look at this through the lens of investors and organizations that have a large contingency or focus on an organization such as the National Association of Black-Owned Businesses, mm -hmm. right? So those groups have publishing companies, they have content, they have reach, they have audiences. How do we as an organization sit there and say, we need to look at equitable investing for our brands and work with that association or put more investment into a, a Black-Owned Film Festival or Hispanic or Hispanic X Film Festival and show that audience that our brands want to be a part of that community. It's not to sit there and say you're pushing product and you're going to be there to tap into them and, and get them to buy product. It truly is how do we continue to invest with that equitable lens on behalf of our brands to show that we do support them as, as businesses and business leaders that want to grow and compete. Um, so that I think is interesting for me. We do a lot of scorecard work with our clients and a lot of that scorecard work will reflect what is our equitable investing percents as a part of the whole. So while that's not necessarily something that's going to make the public look at advertising as why well, you're really improving, that's one area of what we do to engage as a business to do a better job. Today, Dentsu announced another program where they're going to do some cross-educational outreach for individuals who never thought of advertising as a career and maybe don't have a college degree and weren't considered how we get them to look at this as an avenue for themselves to grow and develop a career without having the overhead of, well, I don't have a college degree. So there's, there's ways we're trying to do a better job to grow ourselves as leaders, to bring in other people, different perspectives, to join us, to spend our clients' money more wisely, and then how we become a better global partner as an, as an organizational entity where you typically wouldn't see an ad agency talk about that. But I mean, now we are. We're seeing a lot of holding companies wanting to measure themselves and show that measurement back out to the community because at the end of the day, we all have to make an effort to do better. And I think there's a lot of different ways that advertising is doing that. Whether or not that's in the public lens right now is, is up for someone else's debate. I feel like people don't really realize how powerful advertising can be because some of the most innovative and potentially world-changing solutions have failed due to lack of good marketing, for example. So many in our audience are entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, who are working to make a difference in the world. So what advice would you give them about how to harness the power of marketing to craft their brand story that will help change the world? That's a great question. And you know, we do a lot right now in, in trying to support startup associations, startup groups, nascent and growing small businesses are looking to make a name either for their solution or to be a part of what I will say is like our, our investing radar, like how they can become a publisher, a solution that gets media investment dollars from an agency. I think the biggest challenge that I see, and I've seen a lot of focus shift from people I know in the space to going from business and, and revenue generation and developing a product that Meta could buy or LinkedIn could buy and then turning the corner and going to it again, They've actually changed their focus and they're getting into more um, solutions focused on well-being, 
right? Which is interesting because you didn't think of the well-being space as an area that was going to be growing with opportunity, but look at what COVID's done to us, right? There is a larger focus on my well-being from my perspective and my companies wanting to see, you know, my well-being and checking in with me and how are you doing and bringing solutions to the table that help me to disconnect or go talk to someone or what have you. So what I find interesting, at least in that space, is the growing number of individuals who have shifted their career focus from building product to getting into a solution that provides a mechanism for individuals to check in on their well-being, do a better job, disconnect from work. Um, That self-reflection mechanism, self-awareness mechanism of, hey, you know what? Someone give me feedback on what I'm going through. Maybe it's not me. Maybe it's something I can control that I'm not thinking of. So I think right now that the the emerging space is really interesting to me and what we're following. You know, there's the metaverse world as well that's coming along that still yet to be defined in my in my lens. But I think there's a lot of interesting things that you can do with it. So I think as as businesses grow and individuals get into space to grow that business, I think there's an opportunity for them to reach out to agencies such as ours and others. Talk to leadership about what they are trying to build, what their area of focus is, and if there is any angle, either a connection for a brand integration with a partner that we work with, or perspective on others in the space, I think you're going to realize that a lot of people in my position are very open to creating those connections. The challenge also becomes if you're, you know, if you're if you're in the Silicon Valley or the Silicon Prairie or wherever you're based and trying to do this. You're often surrounded by individuals who think and act like you do. I think the challenge is where you start and tearing that down. Not that it's well-defined, but we do have a lot of people on the agency side who really have a, an innovation hat on that want to know what that, that up-and-coming solution is and how they can position it in front of their clients, either in the lens of investment or technology integration or partnering from the standpoint of, you know what, you're doing X, these guys are growing, maybe there's an opportunity there. Because at the end of the day, I'm only judged by the success of my client's business. And I want to be that individual that says, you know, I brought you 15 things last year. Two of them maybe panned out, but you can't look back at us and say, you're not trying hard enough, right? It goes back to that BD as a commodity. I want to make sure that I've got an angle for them. And a lot of that does come down to relationships and bringing in together a, a nascent growing solution or a nascent media partner with a big brand or with an agency element saying, what if, what is there to to tap into? And it all comes back to, again, being able to do some outreach and creating a network and seeing what is there. I just don't know if enough of the individuals starting up these products and solutions are looking to agencies to do that. And I imagine if I was, and I had, you know, a small group of three or four people looking at a holding company and going, where do I start? Is not easy, but there are ways in. And I think the interesting thing is if you do enough on LinkedIn, you could find those people. And even myself, I'm very happy to have those conversations because I love bringing in those thought leaders to my clients and say, <clears throat> you've gotten very large in your corporation. Look at what's happening outside. Maybe there's something there that can be mutually beneficial for brand and partner and how we can bring that to light. And again, it's not to say it's a, it's a home run every time, but at least we've made that effort. And they see that we're thinking about their business holistically. And if I can help anyone grow their business who's, who's been in my shoes, more than happy to. I mean, that's kind of, you got you to do, do good by doing right, I think, at this point. Absolutely. And I really love the fact that you, among other executives within the advertising space, are so willing to help social entrepreneurs navigate the space. And I, like you said, sometimes it's not the easiest thing to approach a particular holding company, but the the possibilities are out there. And so we talk about what advertising can do, but what are the ways that advertising needs to do better? I think it's a great question. I think it's, it's kind of connected to the last one. It's beholden on all of us in the industry to want to, to do better, to do good for our partners, to do good for ourselves. And I think a lot of that is the ability to extend a hand to an organization, an entity, whatever that is, to help them out. Because at the end of the day, that's only going to help me out in some way. Either I've helped a client, I've made a connection, or I've helped their business. There's really no downside that I could think of to any of that. And even if you create a connection and it doesn't succeed and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't grow, 
you've made the effort, you made the attempt and you learn from it and you move on. I think the area that we can do better on is I think is, is advertising as a whole can do a better job of creating those connections. It, it's very hard, right? The, the mindset that I had when I was 22 years old is, you know, going into the coffee shop was I didn't want to go work for a large organization at that time because I believed the bigger that they got and the more successful they became as an organization, the smaller I was going to be, right? I didn't want that mindset of being like, I'm just a number, I'm doing a job, I'm going to sit here for a couple of years. And that's because I didn't have the, the long-term vision to see where it could go. <clears throat> where advertising can go now is it's, it's making that inroads. And I, I do a lot of volunteer work on the side, but it's making that inroads volunteering to help students or help businesses who are just getting going or taking part in a hackathon. It's creating a emerging business or emerging innovation plan for clients and bringing in partners to help them think differently. It's, it's contributing to more of the equitable investment work that I, I think we've done a pretty good job on. It's growing. It's not where it's going to net out. It's, gonna, it's definitely growing towards that. Um, but I think advertising can still do a better job in that. What I would love to see more within advertising is the people who are 10, 15 years of experience being able to give back into the community, either through an association that is focused within advertising or marketing or with their university to help mentor students to get into our space or to create something that you that hasn't been done before as a mechanism to show that advertising can do good. We can help you do more in your career and I've, you know, I've mentored for a number of years now, and it doesn't mean that everyone I mentor goes into advertising. Sometimes they choose a different route, but at least they have the ability to understand more than they did when they started, solve problems that they didn't know how to address. And I think we all have that capability within ourselves, regardless if I'm a, a president or a C-suite or an account manager, to use that experience for the betterment of our industry and ourselves and I'm a huge proponent of trying to set that up. And I'm actually trying to start up another charity now with a group I, I hang out with in, in Chicago because there's always more you can do. And I think as an industry, we can always do more to help ourselves and others. Um, I think COVID has brought that ability to have us focus on that rather than look at driving revenue or, or solving a brand's problems with more investment or what have you. There's other things that can be done to get the name of the agency out there, get your, your own name out there, help students and so forth. And I say this because as a graduating student, my experience with my alma mater was very poor with regards to the handoff from being a student to going off and getting that job. And I work with my alma mater now. I said, I don't want students to, to struggle the way I did because they need to know what is in front of them rather than jumping out there and then figuring it out. Like we can all have a hand to help in different ways. And I think, I think as an industry, it is, it comes back to the people less, less on the industry itself mm -hmm. uh, to do that, to use their experience for the, for the good. Absolutely. So I have two questions for you. Tell me more about the charity that you're helping to set up. And I would love to know what is a volunteer project that you would consider as one of your favorites? Um, sure. So the, the charity work we're trying to set up now is really revolved around getting, you know, I live in the suburbs of Chicago. So it's getting the communities that we, that we sit within and the, the people that we know to, to donating what they, you know, what they would normally give to a goodwill or, or throw away donating that other causes could benefit from. You can kind of look at this as like, like a DAO, like a you know, distributed organizational model, but we're not sure where it's going to net out. But we think we can do a better job of, of having the community itself <clears throat> look to each other to support. And then we as the entity around it would then figure out where products, where services go, where clothing goes and so forth, rather than having it go to the larger, the goodwills of the world and the Salvation Armies, which do great work. We want to make it a bit more community focused. So more on that, but that that's kind of the focus of where we want to take it. And for me, my passion project lately has been mentoring students. So what I want to give my time to, and I've, I've told this to the Chicago Ad Federation who I work with, and I've told this to my alma maters and, and other universities, I am more than happy to stand up and step in and talk and give guidance to students. I am more than happy to be a connection for them to do outreach, to say, I want to get into creative. How do I do that? I can create a connection for them and do that. I can't help them, but I know the right people. 
-hmm. So again, it's, it's giving my time and my network a bit more openly to individuals and organizations that want to tap into it to help their students. Um, if it's doing curriculums for high schools that are wanting to get kids to be understanding what digital media looks like, giving my time to do that, to ensure that I'm, I'm able to give my experiences out to organizations and entities that can benefit from it. So my volunteering is really what I want to focus on um, through associations with the Chicago Ad Federation or mentoring with my alma mater uh, and then ensuring that they know they can tap into me as a resource to help guide students, to give my time for setting up events and so forth, to show individuals what our industry can do, what the um, advertising space can do, that it's not just there solely for the benefit of the brands we work with, but also as an opportunity to grow as an individual, uh, contribute in different ways than maybe what they thought they could do. And I think a lot of that just comes with the ability to give time and talk to them rather than having them apply to a job on a website. They actually can they actually can lean in a little bit more with folks who have done that, who have been in their shoes. And I'm more of the ringleader because I, I try to bring in about four or five people that I know to do it with me. So they get more of a broad perspective of it, not just from my, my own point of view to do this. So that's where my passion comes in is I'm able to, to get folks, other folks excited to contribute as well, who maybe didn't think about that as, as part of what they could do outside of their business and their day to day. And working in marketing and advertising and customer experience, I'm sure you're very well versed in human centered design. And I feel mm -hmm. like you are more of a human centered designer than you think you are. Mm -hmm. Basically, you found pain points that you've experienced personally when you were making that transition from a a college graduate to a working professional. And you've essentially taken that entire journey and you are finding the points of intervention where you could help. And you're making a huge impact in that way. So thank you for what you do. Well, absolutely. Again, this is why I'm, I'm happy to sit down and talk with you today because it's important for me to have a perspective on what I can do better, but also a perspective of what I've done to get here. And then if that can help others, or show others what's what's possible. I'm I'm all for it because I I did not get here by a normal route, and I'm very proud of that fact. Yeah. And speaking of which, how would you define success generally? Um, that's an interesting question. I think success in my mind is it comes in lots of different flavors. If we are able as an agency entity could to do go uh, you know, often and do award winning work for a client, I think that's incredibly rewarding not for myself or the agency that gets a nice award or what have you, but for the teams that put in their effort to that project, they see what can be done when you work together. And all of those awards are, are team awards, right? There's not one person's name on it. Um, we've won Lions. And I think that the, the ability for a junior planner to see that trophy and that recognition and the, have them feel like what they have put into it is really helping or, or achieving to a greater success. It just goes back to the, the mindset that this is a team sport. There's, there's no one in it for themselves. There's no one can, that can do this themselves. I think also the, the opportunity to stand back and say, you know, in my career, I've been successful at small things, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's that mindset of like, enjoy those moments, right? Success can be very small and nascent, but it's a big win. Mm -hmm. it, could be, it could be creating a connection for a client with another client that they can go off and talk without me involved. And they both look at me as like, wow, you really helped us out. I appreciate it. And that's a small win, but it's, it's also very important because they, then they see me in a different light than just the person at the ad agency. And then at the end of the day, things like volunteer work or the ability to drive clients to new ways of thinking with regards to equitable investment or open their mind up to what equitable investment really is and how we can partake in it rather than Oh, uh, well, we have to be with, you know, CNN or Meta is really important for me as well, because it, it does show that we are able to think differently for the brand, that we are a partner of the brand. And that in itself is a su success because, you don't again, you don't ever want to be looked at as a vendor. So anytime I can go across my portfolio of client relationships and see where we are at with those clients and know that we have something different than just a here's a media brief, go do a plan relationship is extremely, in my mind, is, is an extreme success because I don't think any, I don't think there's a lot of folks out there who could say that, unfortunately, in this space because of the way things have been set up with their businesses. And I actually, <laughs> I use this as a recruitment point for people coming in that, you know, from day one, you're going to see a different relationship. You're going to see a different way of engaging. You're going to see a different way to tap into your experiences and drive success for yourself, which makes me feel great. 
it's not my success, but we set folks up to be successful. And if I can't do that, then I'm, I'm really not doing my job. So speaking of setting people up for success, how would you advise people in the audience to reach out to you if they're interested in speaking more about advertising and marketing and customer experience? I'm happy to. And I think, again, I will, I will go off and say, you know, I'm very open on LinkedIn. Not to say that I'm flooded with these requests. I'm not. So obviously be flattered if they do, if they do come across. I think the one thing I would say is to avoid that trap of, hey, I sent you a connection request. You know, you didn't follow up on me. Why is that? Is to say, if you're going to reach out, have an angle, Mm -hmm. two points on what you're trying to accomplish. And always think about it from the lens of myself, right? I am more than happy to create connections. I am more than happy to broaden my network. But I think I love other folks to sit there and say, you're in advertising. I'm doing this. I think there's an opportunity rather than be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. You need to talk to me. Um, not to say that's the only way to approach it, but as I tell students, you have to understand that people are more than willing to create a connection or an open door for you. If you show them a reason why it's a good thing for them to do that. Right. So there's, there's benefit across the board. I am more than happy to chat with anyone on LinkedIn all day long, but I would love people to come at it from a perspective of I'm doing X, you're doing Y. I think we should talk more about what this means, bigger picture rather than, hey, I sent you a connection request, why didn't you accept it, right? I think that's the challenge these days is you got to find a way to to show value on both ends. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's basically just be a human being. Um, Be a human being. (laughs) Exactly. So Craig, it was such a pleasure speaking with you and I learned a lot and I hope we get to do this again soon. And are there any parting words that you'd like to say for the audience? I don't really have any parting words because I don't think I'm that powerful of a person to have a big statement out there that <laughs> people can rally around. I think at the end of the day, as long as you're focused on, on doing good, whether that you know whether that's right in front of you or the bigger picture, I think it's imperative that as an advertising leader, we continue to bring in strong, thoughtful people into our business with a perspective on, on why they're there right? They're there to serve brands and partners and clients, as well as yourself. We have to get something out of this job. So that, that's beholden on me and other leaders to, to really help individuals do that. So it's not just looked at as, I have a job, we want you to have a career, we want you to have a path. So no, I'm very much, very much happy and willing to do this. I love every minute of being able to answer questions and talk more about what I do and how I've gotten here. So thank you very much for having me on today. It's been, it's been great. Thanks so much, Craig. We'll talk soon. That's it for this week's episode of Inner Wealth. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and that you'll join us next week as we continue to explore all the ways success is being redefined in our ever-changing world. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our podcast on your favorite podcast app and follow us on Instagram at Forbes Ignite for more thought-provoking content and opportunities to engage with us. I'm your host, Nicole Kakal. Thanks for joining us.